Hi all, welcome to another King's Crusher radio show on the Play Chess server and streaming to YouTube. I'm going to say hi all on chat there. <clears throat> okay, just waiting for my preview. So, another couple of classic games to go over this evening. This is from the best of the best of the 1930s. So, let's see, this is Botnik against Chekhova. So I thought we'd check over this game with Chekover. <laughs> Funny or not? Maybe not. Okay, so Knight F3 from Botnik. This was played in Moscow, 1935. So Moscow, 1935. Let's connect to the notebook and add a bit here as well. Okay, so we have D5. From check over c4 e6 and now actually b3 which is the intention to sort of try and put pressure on the dark squares knight f6 bishop e2 bishop e7 e3 so another dark square grip move black castled bishop e2 c6 and black is not playing that creatively he's putting pawns on light squares so the adjacent squares you can see uh, are in white's hands at the moment also this bishop might be a problem piece as well uh, but uh, okay black castles sorry i mean white castles knight bd7 knight c3 a6 and now we see the move knight d4 this is interesting it's like tempting black to kick the knight and weaken the pawn structure this is quite a nice solid triangle at the moment so maybe black shouldn't be that keen on kicking the knight if we if we just kick the knight you know we weaken d5 just go back even just go back that's uh, an improvement maybe on the position um, e5 is even yeah, might even permit knight f5. Uh, so, okay, black actually took on c4. B takes c4. Knight c5. And now actually another dark square grip move, f4. So quite a large percentage of the pawn chain is involved in gripping dark squares here on this diagonal. Queen c7. Knight f3, rook d8, and it might be possible for black to consider knight d3 in this position, but that stopped queen c2 taking control of that square a bit more, and maybe d4 to follow because it's also taking control of this square as well. In fact, we see now off the knight treating d4, white seems to have. A very comfortable central position here an aggressive grip on the dark squares uh, we have to move c5 now possibly d5 it is tempting here to play d5 you'd think it's like opening up the diagonal is there anything tactically wrong with it cd on cd there might be c4 that could be a snag with b5 to follow uh, or bishop c5 that could be a snag but actually this position is not too bad with knight takes this didn't happen in the game apparently white should be okay here if not yeah slightly better at least but black has enough dark square grip i think uh, to hold things for a while so anyway um in this position d5 it wasn't played we have instead knight e5 which celebrates this grip on e5 Tartico one settle knight on e5 and the attack plays itself so this looks like a nice knight on e5 as a prelude to some sort of attack and you can see with this f pawn that it's prime time for sometimes or quite often you know a rook lift it, it just facilitates this rook lift this concept of the bind is like almost pillsbury bind style Harry Nelson Pillsbury uh, won the Hastings. He's shot to fame winning the Hastings, but he came known to for the Pillsbury bind. 
and this has a Pillsbury bind fill to it. In fact, white is now targeting the king side a bit more. Black took on d4, e takes, bishop b7. Queen e2, the queen's got a little bit more flexibility here on both sides of the board. Uh, these these queen moves, I, I was uh, checking, revising the uh, one of the 1972 Fischer-Spassky uh, uh, games. And there was one game he played queen f4 and put the queen back. And what I noticed is, you know, the queen's good at eyeing both sides of the board. It's, it's maximum flexibility. It's not totally committed to some hack attack, but it's it's now ready. It's ready for that sort of thing. Knight f8. And the threat here is rook takes d4 immediately. So that pawn's actually protected, but it's also dual purpose. This knight might actually swing over as well at some point. Rook a7. And in fact, the knight swings now, now, because it might actually try and take out one of the key defenders. Queen b8. In fact, it switches to h3 rather slowly. So if it goes to g g5, supporting the other knight to hit f7, that's dangerous. So black tries to parry that threat. And yeah, white's position is looking like very dangerous looking but without uh, anything obvious what do you think white plays here what white play here what would you play here with white if I give you 20 seconds it's a stream so I'm giving you more than my usual YouTube videos in case you're wondering there is a very very powerful move played in this position which is is looking actually you really want to liberate your attacking pieces. So if this doesn't come to mind for liberating the pieces, because remember the pawn structure is like the fundamental straitjacket we're all in. We all want to be liberated, don't we, in some way, uh, in terms of freedom. Um, so, uh, but on the chessboards, the prison is often the pawn structure. So with that clue in mind, what attacking move would you like to play here which would liberate your pieces and ideally lock down the opponent's pieces at the same time black's pieces are already pretty passive looking now if you inspect black's position these don't seem that aggressive black's playing like a mouse in this game so uh let's see what do you play here Okay, there's been a suggestion or two there on stream. Um, by the way, on play chess, audio is okay, right? I was going to ask that. Just, just to make sure. I'm not going completely mad. Only gin. One gin. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so knight takes f7 is not uh, the move actually, although it is kind of tempting, uh, but apparently black might be okay here, even if check here now. Uh, apparently black is okay, there's nothing uh, immediately apparent from technical analysis. The move played is actually trying to liberate the pieces it's sort of positional really you might think of this as attacking but it's kind of positional in that it's trying to wrench open this rook and it's hitting f7 so black's really got to do something about one of the knights taking f7 uh, so he takes that and yeah we're sort of wrenching open this rook and you might think well my, my first thought is like why is why is this such a one-sided game? White's got everything he dreamt of from the opening. A black's piece is just like lemmings, just sitting mostly on the first and second rank here. What what is this game? It's this is not a two-way fight. 
uh, after this move anyway. It doesn't look to me like a two-way two fight. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's surprising that it's in so many people's collections at chess games. Come, it's a totally one-way kill. I mean, it looks to me like a one-way kill, this position. If you just look at the difference in pieces. Um, yeah, but apparently it's in 113 collections at chess games. Com. So, okay, so the knight uh, goes back. Uh, actually, it doesn't go back. If the knight did go back, I mean, this is just murder, right? Knight takes f7. And we're probably going to be ending up mating on on h8 at some point. Let's see. If if just just a token move, queen h5 friends mate. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just over there. So the other knight actually um, is used. Ah, but now we do get a taste of of real punishment here. In this position, but white white has an overwhelming position anyway. But another knight sack is used. This is probably one of the most crushing moves available. Sorry, sorry. Let me get to the position. Knight eight to d seven, not knight h seven. Knight eight to d seven. But this other knight sack is used. Knight takes f seven on me. King takes. And I mean, it's such a crushing position. I mean, you should be checking out queen sacks here, but um, the move played uh, might not. On this occasion, yes, I remember. I remember analysing this in some depth, some way back, uh, some time way back, and I do distinctly remember it's here that, uh, despite this overwhelming position. <laughs> But Vinick manages to find the move, which is really, really uh, potentially giving Black uh, a, a minimal disadvantage. Uh, so there's actually uh, at least four different moves, four, which are actually technically much stronger than the actual game continuation. Um, so I'll give you points for any of those four and one point for Botvinnik's move. So White's play here. Um, so what would be, do you reckon, the strongest move in this position? Mm -mm. White's play here. Yeah, I, m I remember Botvinnik kind of really didn't make the best out of this position. Because I think there are some sly resources in in what he played. All right, if you said Queen H five check two hundred points, that is much stronger than what he played. For example, King moves, G takes, Knight takes, Rook takes. Bishop takes this position with rook f1 is apparently crushing this this move rook f1 it's almost basically it's cutting away escape squares potentially of the king we've already got access to h7 so let's follow this through let's say I'm black plays a move like bishop c8 bishop g6 really cutting this f7 escape square and let's see so if here there's bishop a3 cutting the e7 escape square potentially. Uh, but say rook d6, check, or, or in fact the d6 escape square, ma making this mate there. So that's one example of a crossfire from this diagonal as well as this diagonal. Why this is this is absolutely murderous, this position. I said bishop c8. The compute moves are ridiculous. Bishop f3 is mentioned for some reason. Let's have a look at this. Bishop g6 with the idea of a check. And okay. And taking on f6. For example, check. 
In fact, here, bishop a3 wins the queen. That's winning the game. If we look at the ridiculous computer moves, I mean, bishop e4, giving up the bishop for some reason. Maybe to put the, the rook there. Fine. Check. We're checking over the checks in the game of check over. Probably against check over. Good to check over the checks. Now, you might wonder why put the queen in front, or if you put the rook in front. Uh, then here is a blasting move in the form of rook takes f6 which means if takes I think we play check and win the queen and if uh, rook takes I think we still play check and win the queen uh, so there's all these lines based on what are these lines based on this lovely queen h5 check Yeah, what haven't I mentioned yet? G6. We just play bishop takes G6. Queen H6. Rook takes F6 is crashing through with the threat of bishop F7 mate. So if knight takes, G takes. This is like mating. Uh, or the mate on G7 as well. Uh, so that's totally end of game. So basically, after Queen H5. There would have been no defense whatsoever. Nothing. It's gone with best play. But it requires some calculation and imagination. Um, uh, okay, maybe some risk, element of risk. Uh, what was played was actually. Um, I mean, e even as a prelude, even as a prelude, this is strong as well to the check. We, we get some of the same. Ideas at the check here, forcing the winner of the queen. Basically, we, we get some of the same ideas. I mean, you might think, well, hang on a sec, what about knight c5? I don't think so. Rook takes f6, d takes, and actually, we've got this protected as well. Yeah, so it's it's all disastrous. But what Botvinnik plays was g6. Yeah. He played g6 and black uh, played king g8, which loses horribly uh, because of it starts with queen takes e6 check. But yeah, I remember this. Black has some resourcefulness up his sleeve on king f8 in a theoretical sense, which it is kind of interesting because. Why would I say it's interesting? It it kind of gives an opportunity for creating a connection on the second rank via very tactical means. So say this move, it looks absolutely winning, right? But can you see the defensive resource that black has available? So black's trying to defend. Now so black's playing here. Yeah. This is a variation. There's a way, apparently, for black to play here. Which is equal, apparently. So you've got to defend against checkmate. How would you do that? Black's plan to defend against Queen F7 checkmate. Okay, not too many candidate moves actually. Even if we go to the raw candidate move level. Knight E5. Defends F7. And you might think, if it takes, that is creates a weakness of the last move. So we get this check. We've got to check over the checks. And here, there's a lust for a connection. A lust for a connection to help F7, right? How do we defend F7 here? <clears throat> Hmm. 
and actually it leads to an advantage for black technically now bishop d5 is on the right track by the way it's the qa uh, there but there's actually an even stronger move this is actually still winning for white after c takes because we've got this pins yeah no th there's a stronger move much stronger Remember, there's, a, there's a hanging piece here as well yeah so you might want to try and defend mate and be greedy and win this piece on d3 so you need time to sort of stand still so there's a great way of making time stand still it's called forcing moves gaining a tempo yeah bishop c8 uh no no because rook takes although it creates that connection rook takes and uh queen takes Th this position is very good in fact that bishop survives with a vengeance it's coming to c6 and it's too difficult for black to defend this black would have to give up the queen here because if something like this then queen f7 mate or here with queen f7 and queen uh this is mating uh the bishop's covering f8 in case you're wondering but this is still mating it's horrible no there's a way um with uh let's go back so you, it's all about getting this big connection right to f7 but um you can actually do that with tempo with bishop takes g2 check <laughs> check over the checks of the check over game the most instructive checking game there is okay so rook takes d3 and yeah we're defending f7 and it still looks mean on f6 but if e takes this is actually just winning for black off to check and uh where's the king going we've got a complimentary uh bishop and queen here <laughs> this this is just over in fact white's just lost white's just lost this is uh, King G8. Remember, we've got F8 cover. There's nothing there. Yeah. So it's the behind the scenes uh, defense. Knight E5. So White would have to scramble for a draw here with some play. There is a way of playing to get a draw, like Queen H3. Threatening mate. Black again has to be super resourceful here with knight actually so black will probably never see this in a million years this stuff so knight f3 blocking uh, the fr uh, so that this knight can perhaps go back to g8 if rook takes bishop takes we've still got knight g8 now without the knight being pinned you know check we just play knight g8 uh, but yeah maybe black wouldn't see any of this in a million years well that's why he didn't play it anyway um so anyway no the opponent check over played king g8 but with a name like check over you gotta check over the checks no i'm gonna stop that i'm gonna stop that okay uh you know okay it's not funny it wasn't funny the first time queen takes e6 check uh king h8 um check King g8 bishop f5 threatening check and then mating even with the knight coming to g8 uh, knight f6 is played this is just very strong for white check 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 and now to break through to h7 yes brilliant rook takes f6 check now rook e1 cutting the king off and we've also got this killer bishop a3 check as well as the obvious more obvious even uh, queen h8 mate in one threat so black shields the e file to give his king a square but um yeah white can probably can white just take that yeah that's winning as well anything's winning here he plays check, check, uh, check, 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 
check. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, classic game uh, from Botnik. There. Uh, some I, f I I I don't know. I, I I'm starting to think every every Botnik game seems to be having some rumor. I'm probably exaggerating that people gave up against Botnik on purpose. The the the, the reason why uh, such rumors existed. I I think Botnik was seen by some as the chosen one, and you shouldn't like get in his way. Uh, but that was this, so this is Moscow 1935 though maybe, maybe there wasn't any controversy uh, around it <clears throat> but uh, okay yeah it was it was an interesting game anyway an, an interesting game let's look at another one now another notable game so this is uh, from 1933 Now players here just you just wouldn't have heard of them ever. So nineteen thirty three played in Madrid. Okay, so uh Martin Esteban against Jose Sanz Aguado. That's the best I'm gonna make it. E four, E six, D three, D five, knight C three, knight F six, E five. We have um a French defence. Of sorts, white does seem to have an aggressive pawn chain. Knight b5 takes takes, and white's just blunder the pawn, hasn't he? Because this bishop's like pinned, so rook takes. But hold on, this can be unpinned. What's going on here? But hold on, there's a check, there's a check here. So black's just nicked a pawn, okay, and in fact, nicks another pawn. Yeah, greedy. Bishop f4, rook f5. Is greed going to be punished? But faces an attack. Maybe queen c2. Defends that pawn. Bishop e5. Looks as though things are being pointed at his king. Yeah, is he regretting materialism? Yeah, he gives back. He tries to give back an exchange to soak up the pressure. But white now sacrifices. And plays rook f1. We have this dangerous looking check. Queen g6. Rook f7. That looks pretty dangerous. Queen takes g5. Rook takes d7. Rook takes b7. Okay. Bishop goes back. c4. That's taken. Knight c3. So, black is material up here. Yes. Rook d8. Rook d2. Now, here's the clever point of the game. This position is the amusing study like finish. Uh, so, you might be wondering why am I showing this game? Of these unknown players, I think this is the critical position of great interest. So yeah, please forgive me accelerating through that game. I wasn't going to look it up in Chess Space Live Book or anything. Yeah, I think these guys are just amateurs, but they had uh, a brilliant finish from this position. I mean, super, super brilliant. Now, when I say super, super brilliant, I mean, why do you think two players you've never heard of? would be in so many people's collections at chess gamescom do you think it's just random do you think somehow they randomly ended up in people's game collection no they've collected this game and i think we've come to the central arena of this game right here right now black to play has a really crushing conception which the engine likes as well really super crushing conception yeah The pawns are islands, aren't they? One island, two island, three island, four island. So even though black for the moment is uh, a couple of pawns up, given the quality of the structure, white's actually got the better structure on both sides of the board. 
and if white's given a move or two he might start playing moves like king f1 or king h2 and g4 to get that out of the firing line get the king out of the firing line okay but for the moment black to play has a very very clever clever resource in this position which makes this game kind of famous so black black play for 500 points especially if you can see the continuation after so black play So rook d2, knight a4. Any ideas? Just the end game, right? End game's not that tactical, right? Okay, yeah, this pawn is dangerous. Rook takes b2 is played. This doesn't leave too many choices uh, for white because this pawn's about to be mowed up. Yeah, if he plays rook f7, we're just going to mow this pawn, and this is totally easy. Alter. So that rook's taken. Then we have c3. So is this is this end of game? Because, for example, if knight d3, we want to blockade, yeah. There's c4 check, yeah. If we take that, c takes, and these two pawns are winning here. The king's too far away, yeah. Here, uh, c2, and then d2, and then one of the pawns is queening. So, we have a quandary here, uh, and if knight c2, just c2, queening, nothing to stop the rooks away over. So, white actually decided to play rook takes b6. And the thing is now, uh, if a takes, Knight d3, and actually white's fine, it seems. You have c4, we, we just block everything. Yeah. And we can start to bring our king in. So this, has this spoiled all the fun? Yeah. So if um, the rook is taken as I mentioned knight d3 yeah um <clears throat> so we we've looked at taking um c2 knight d3 so is is that it then or is there something more interesting about this position here that might possibly save black so black's play actually we had a puzzler didn't we last week do you remember the connected past pawns this is a kind of related little story that we want potentially a winning well pass pawns or connected pass pawns. If you remember last week we had a that tricky over against Amakine pass pawn finish. But here there's a there's a brilliant move which is also it also has potential to create winning pass pawns. Oh, I've got you stumped with this. Oh, 
Oh. Okay, the move is actually C4. Just to be able to put an end, just terminate this nightly free resource. Now, White tried. Um, White, White tried Rook B4. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> that is funny. No, it is funny. It is funny. This is what White tried. We have to come back to this Mufe for. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. This is good. Actually, this is quite good. No, this is this is making me laugh now. Okay, so black black. To play. <laughs> oh no, this is tragic. But black to play. I don't know how the black pawns have managed to conspire together. They've managed to conspire together in an evil way against these poor two pieces. Uh they've managed to conspire. I, I don't know. Did they really make? Did they make up this game? Did they just make this game up? This this can't happen. This can't happen. The two pieces cannot be that unlucky against pawns, right? They cannot be unlucky like this in a real game. I I just want to point out, right. C2 loses, you just take here, end of game. Yeah? C takes, loses, we just take here. There's one move and one move only, which wins for black, which is A5. And this is crazy. Because, unfortunately, for the rook, <laughs> that this position. <laughs> It's not ideal because <laughs> the rook. There's no check. There's no check to check over, and there's no rook c1, and there's no rook b4. So unfortunately, there's no defence to the pawn queening in this position. How how unlucky is that? How unlucky is that? Uh, uh, white plays. Uh, Knight takes c2, right? But now, another amusing thing, c2, because now we can't even use c4 because the knights use that parking space. Yeah? <laughs> we can't use b1. And this pawn's queening again. So this makes me feel less bad because I, I once lost this over the board game about three four years ago where the opponent's past pawns were quite dangerous and I underestimated them and I wondered how I could be so silly to underestimate past pawns but you see here even if you're two pieces up you can underestimate past pawns they're really really dangerous past pawns are super dangerous but let's go back to move 33 I did promise we're going to go back to move 33 so somewhere we're going to go back uh, was it move 33? Uh, here, where rook b4 was played. Yeah, if knight takes c4, then c2. Yeah, we, we can't get behind the pawn with the knight there, breaking the connection on the c file. We, we can't have b1 either. Yeah? So what else is the concern? Knight a4, there's c2. Again, we can't get back via b1, and this that pawn's in the way, so we just queen it again. It's it's just ridiculous. This whole thing is just ridiculous. And yes, this is all engine checked. This continuation is totally precision, total precision, total precision. If Blank played rook c2, I mean, you wouldn't think about it. It's like it's it, it's it's like. I don't know, it reminds me of those films they say they're going into some restaurant which looks 
I don't know that words um, for not looking great, but the food is brilliant. It's like we've just entered this restaurant which didn't look that great of this game between two unknown players. But the food here is brilliant. They have a word for that sort of restaurant. Uh, rustic, I think. Rustic. But yeah, the, the restaurant of this game is rustic. Yeah, and that's why I accelerated to this position. Rustic. But what we have here is a gem. Um, this is a gem because, you know, Rook C2, maybe with best play, it, it might be good for Black, but he's got some work to do. Yeah, he's got some work to do. Black is better. But with this gem of a continuation, it's really quite a stunner. This uh, rook takes b2. What What do you guys think? Do you, would you agree with that? This is a gem. Would you agree? A gem? Gem finish. No? If you think it's a gem finish, one gem finish, ten okay finish. I don't know. I, th I thought it was a gem finish. Rook takes b2. Just seems to win. I mean, we can carry on analyzing. Knight takes b2 was played. If we play anything else, as I mentioned, the a2 pawn's going to drop. Yeah? So the a2 pawn's going to drop. Yeah, let's just, just check it out again for sanity. Knight takes b2. c3. So white is resourceful if rook takes b6 thinking that's the end of that and then we have C C4 now we didn't check out knight no knight d3 we just take here by the way this this position is hopeless because the king is too far away yeah so if we go behind the pawn we just play d2 the king is unable to stop this pawn and then, and then of course c2 you yeah? know Yeah, so that that's why knight knight d three is like not even worth. Yeah, funny. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, on that note, I'm going now. Okay, so have a good rest of the week and good weekend. Uh, maybe see you next week. Thanks for thanks very much. Uh, remember to upvote the video if you like it on YouTube or any further comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks. See you next week. Cheers then.